Hello, new lovers! Check out this baby right behind me. What is it? It's the ES7 that we showed you last month in our previous video. But remember, that was only a display model in a showroom, and we couldn't really show you the inside. Today, we have it out for our first test drive, and I'm going to show you more detail that I didn't cover last time. First of all, I'm going to walk you through once again the outside of the car because that's how we overcome the learning curve. Remember the ES7 is not much different from the ES8 or ES6. I know you have trouble with those all these numbers. But remember, there's only one shell, the die cast aluminum framework. But there's minor details that Neo puts on different models to make each model slightly different. So what is different about this car? First of all, the front light is changed into this double dash with one on the top, one on the bottom for more nuanced lighting. And the grille is moved down to here, leaving open this space X bar, what Neil calls the shark nose for aesthetic purposes to make it more aggressive and sharp. You know what? I've actually seen people decorating this part with shark teeth it's really horrendous. Uh, this looks pretty good, but we could do without it. Another upgrade that Neo is so proud of this new SUV is its hardware upgrade, so-called cameras here, of higher resolution to monitor the car 360 for better Neo pilot and autonomous driving experience in the future. On top of that, added camera here, the three humps with the LiDAR in the middle to make the car more sensitive, just in case you want something more advanced. Check out this sleeky little key redesign this time. One of the best improvements that I see on this car, because it really feels nice. So if you have that in your pocket, and if you want to open the trunk without touching any button, if you're like holding the giant box or something, use gesture control if you have the key in your pocket and the door pops open automatically this is obviously a giant space as i said six more than 600 liters of room for starch and there's another layer deck right here for more inside storage and this board could be taken away if you want and i'm gonna lay the seats down for to show you what a giant space looks like. Oh, I think it actually comes not here. Oh, it goes in the front. There. There. The last part of the car uh, difference here is this tail light that dashes through. Neo loses its unique <laughs> zigzaggy tail lights. Some people like them, some people don't. Uh, so this is pretty cool, but that's kind of how the other EVs design their tail lights now. Neo calls it the air wing. Hope it flies. Uh, another upgrade is that there's going to be a, sp a specifically engineered tow bar here. This car doesn't have it. It actually costs 7,500 RMB if you want an extra tow bar. So the tow bar carries along an extra trailer. It's also a transmitter that transmits electricity from the car to the trailer. Uh, which is not realistic at this time because as I said, as I said 100 kilowatt hour battery sustains six, 600 uh, kilometers of mileage which comes down to 450 because of, of all the discounts you have. If you have an extra trailer that butchers the battery, you're only going to be able to drive 200 to 50 kilometers. Uh, how is that useful if you're carrying along a trailer to a far away, far away place?
Another upgrade to this car to make it more luxurious is the seat design. Before I sit in it, I'm going to show you what are the changes that have been made to this car. Obviously, it's not a leather, but you could get haptex, meaning synthetic leather and fabric in the middle uh, for a lower price. This full leather one is of gray color. There are, there are three colors, the brown, the gray, or kind of dark they call it black but it's actually gray and white i like this color and the the improvement made to the seat is the queen seat on the passenger side comes all standard now with the back to be laid down fully and then there's a calf rest that you could extend to prop up your calves and you could also take it back and if you want some foot rest there's another knob here so many knobs i get confused to rest your feet here under what the glove box should be which neil doesn't even have one so you know what i'd rather replace a foot rest with a glove box because storing things in this car is really a trouble sometimes so if you want that full comfort for the passenger you might consider this car a standard queen seat now I'm gonna sit in the car and show you what the cabin feels like a big change made to this car is its interior looks nothing like the other SUV models. It looks more like the ET7, however, a change is made too, because that's how you sell cars, to make them slightly different yet all the same. So what is different about this car? The ET7 being the sedan is more flat. It's got a laid back space. So the console and the dashboard have to accommodate to a flat space. But with this SUV being the vertical, uh has more vertical space the dashboard is designed with steps and the air ventilation the holes where cold and hot air comes out is built inside this teeny in-between space decorated by the karun wood and that's really smart i think Ambience lighting has also come in more fancy ways for you to play if you're a control freak why there are three different colors you could have in the car by setting them at different spots. Um, I'm going to show you how to set it up. Uh, environment, comfort, no, lighting right here. So, oh no, what the, f okay, ambience lighting, that's too complicated. Uh, more than 208 colors uh, for you to select. There's also themes, if you pick out a theme, and for example the sunshine theme the entire interior of the car is gonna look like feel like sunshine so besides the theme uh, function you could set the ambience lighting in different areas you could set up uh, for example blue on the dashboard to the side of the door you could set up another color for example green in this storage box right here and a different color in the back seat uh, I, I can't show you right now because I can't play music due to copyright concerns, but you could also set uh, ambience lighting to jump and vibrate with the rhythm of the music and it also adjusts color to the color t cover tone of the album you're playing. That's really unnecessary, but uh, some people will like it. Another upgrade to the passenger seat. And I'm correct, going to correct what uh, slightly what I talked about this car earlier is that you could adjust the back seat from 23 to 31 degree of tilt. It's what Neil calls as the 8 degree tilt. So if you're on a long drive, you could actually, the passengers in the back could actually uh, adjust their comfort. Uh, do the back seats have massage? Yes and no. Last time I said yes, but it's a yes and no answer. Yes, because there is a function called back relaxation. Neo denies it as a massage because back relaxation is really massage using the three butane airbags to give you a movable lumbar across your back 
for you to relax. Why doesn't it have massage? Because it lacks all the teeny little gadgets, rubbers inside here, like the front seats have to give you more nuanced massage function. Why? Because unlike the ET7, which uh, has set seats in the back that can't be laid back, this SUV has to have back seats that could be laid back for more space, which is more than 600 liters if you put them down to store things or have a sleepover in your car. So the ES7 is priced a little bit higher than the other SUV models because it, some of the assisted driving functions come standard on this car. For example, on the screen right in front of my face, I could see simulations of the cars on the lanes next to me. I can see people on their scooters in a white little figure and it shows uh, if the car, a car gets too close to me, the color turns red. Uh, the other cars are like gray. So that's one function that comes standard on an ES7. It's like I'm driving in a VR game. On the EC6, we don't have this function, so uh, the screen right in front of my face is like just ordinary. And I've wondered for a long time why I don't have that, because when you purchase a car, you just kind of pay the money and know the things you kind of could have. And some of the functions we realize later that we actually don't have because we didn't pay for Neopilot. Uh, and that's just the things you got to learn what you have and what you don't. The seat feels more comfortable than the uh, what we have. It's uh, like a more solid support. Our EC6 is a bit uh, cushioned, so you kind of mm, sag into the seat. And this gives you an upright support. I don't know if it's because of the leather or it's because of the seat. This is my fellow Eric today, new house specialist who is an engineer to supervise my test drive today. Eric just told me that the seat on the ES7 actually has improved a lot. Uh, because all the other SUV models, uh, the seat is designed ergonomically to uh, cuddle you in kind of like an air comb. So when there's an air, uh, like traffic accident, you get fully wrapped into the seat floor to protect your spine. But because of that design, uh, you actually feel um, you're lacking support or you're lacking support in terms of sitting upright. Um, in the comfort position. The ES7 improved the seat by separating the back and the seat into two separate parts. And you could adjust these two parts separately. And for example, the seat that I'm sitting on is like flat and I don't have to exert extra force using my thigh onto the seat to support my calf and uh, hit the brake or accelerator. So um, I've actually had trouble driving long distance on the EC6 because I, I don't feel exhaustion while I drive the car, but I do feel like drained when I step out of the car and go back home. So hopefully that problem uh, won't exist on an ES7. Again, all these uh, discomfort, uh, pressure, stress you feel from driving is uh, common among all the driving experience. I don't think that's a big problem.
I could feel the brake and the accelerator has been improved. It's, uh, Eric told me it's uh, kind of designed in a traditional way, like a gas car. You feel that solid press. Uh, and on an EC6 is kind of like um, elastic because the way EVs are designed, uh, you don't actually feel much of the acceleration of the, being forceful uh, on the pedal, but it gets uh, accelerated so quickly. Hey, Nomi. Uh, the mileage uh, with a 100 kilowatt hour battery on paper is 600 kilometers. In reality, it's discounted to probably 450 kilometers. Um, the 75 kilowatt hour battery on paper, the mileage is 485 kilometers. So that may come down to 350 in reality, in the summer at least. <laughs> Air resistance um, coefficient. I don't know. Eric just told me that uh, the mileage on this ES7 and the AT7, I know the f numbers are really confusing for you. The AT7 is their latest luxury sedan uh, that I used as a sample to a uh, introduce this car in our previous video so the ET7's mileage is basically the same 350 on a 70 watt kilowatt hour battery and one, uh, uh, 600 on the 100 kilowatt hour battery that uh, the mileage on the ET7 is more realistic than this one because of the aerodynamic of a sedan um, so the air resistance coefficient i don't know i'm just translating directly from chinese uh ranks only second to ferrari that's just an extra little bit of information not related to this car driving right now i could feel definitely how quiet this car is on the inside uh, like I'm just driving in my living room and this is the concept that Neo tries to convey with their new generation cars is to make the car your second living room. All I can hear right now is the, the sound of the wind coming from the uh, air the ventilation hose right in front of me. It doesn't have English yet. I like how the wheel feels. It's like so strong and dry. <laughs> uh, I know that's weird, but <laughs> with my EC6, I actually feel like the wheel is sticky sometimes, especially in the summer because you sweat and uh, you, you kind of leave stain on it, even though you can't see it. Uh, this is like a super dry, solid, dry leather. So how do you like this car? As already an EC6 owner, I don't see that I need much of the upgrades because it's only for comfort, luxury, and all that social status kind of frown it gives you. So I definitely would not think about replacing the EC6 with this one. But if you are thinking about getting a SUV EV, in the future, this should definitely be included in your list.